go ahead and start, but uh, if we get the projector, I might switch back to square one. Uh, my name is Larry Thomas. I'm with the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Aha, here comes the projector. Stand by, which is uh, one of the NASA centers around the country. Uh, I am assuming that uh, I just met a gentleman that's not from Canada, but I'm assuming most of the audiences are Canadians. Uh, I don't know how much you know about the NASA facilities or NASA centers. There are about 12 of them around the country. Uh, one, the most famous being the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, Goddard is basically a, a software center. That is, it's mostly paperwork and computer type work, but we do build some hardware. And I'm fortunate to work with a group that does most of the hardware. Uh, the Shuttle Small Payloads Project flies uh, the getaway specials. Uh, we did fly a, uh, uh, some, uh, another related system called the CAP, or Complex Autonomous Payloads. But uh, starting in September, we will be the, uh, those will be called Hitchhiker Juniors due to a problem we had last year and headquarters says get rid of the CAP program. Uh, we had some uh, highly visible uh, experiments that uh, one called the BremSat, sat, which was a uh, satellite made by Bremen University in Germany. And uh, we had some problems with the hardware in it because when the getaway special system was originally built, it was very low cost and nothing was, uh, there were no redundant systems put into the system so that we could keep it low cost. But that was long before the Challenger program. And uh, in the post-Challenger program, uh, NASA is going for high mission success more than they are anything, at system safety also, but high mission success. So anything's got a lot of high visibility. They're very anxious to see that it is uh, very, uh, that they are successful. Now, most of the getaway specials are not, uh, have no feedback loop into NASA for their success, except on a voluntary basis. If you fly an experiment and get away special, it's up to you to tell us whether your, exper you, your experiment was successful. We don't really require that as feedback. It was basically a carrier system on the space shuttle. The uh, first thing I'd like to do is uh, Express my thanks to Wayne and Carson for allowing me to come here and associate with the NASA Canadians, which I'm very honored to be doing. We, uh, they did provide a lot of the impetus to the uh, NASA space program early on, and Canada remains very involved with NASA, and I don't think we could really get along without the Canadians. The uh, remote manipulator arm that uh, Canada supplies to the space shuttle is probably one of the most successful instruments that's ever flown for the thing, understanding you can actually pick ferries on this thing. Uh, as you can see, we do fly other, uh, so other hardware other than the uh, getaway special. The getaway special is the smallest in the stable that we fly. And the two canisters there on the right are ones that represent the getaway special. The uh, larger hardware is what we call hitchhiker, which these are all shuttle carrier systems. And they start out at the getaway special and go on up to much more expensive, much more sophisticated hardware. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, tell you enough about the Getaway Special System so that you will, you will be aware of how the program works. And I'm going to lead on into the Hitchhiker in case someone may decide later on to go on up into the Hitchhiker program. Like I say, we started a little early. Here, these are the three carriers I was speaking of, the uh, Getaway Special, the Hitchhiker, and the Hitchhiker Junior. Uh, the CAP program was, uh, the Hitchhiker Junior was called the CAP program. In September, we start flying it as the Hitchhiker Junior, which has more system reliability and feedback loops so that we can double check the systems to make sure everything's ready for satellite ejection or whatever that is being done on the system. Back in 1985, we ejected two small satellites from this system. It was prior to Challenger. And they were called the New Sat Bomber. One was a military satellite, the other was a... No. Come on, switch on to this one. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll take it back. But uh, the program I'm going to talk about mainly is the Getaway Special System. And I'll just relate the other ones later. The getaway special flew. I can see where the other guy got his from. 
Um, back when the program first started in uh, 19, the first Baylor flew in 1982, uh, it was a University of Utah experiment that, uh, payload that had 12 separate experiments on it. These were student experiments from the University of Utah, and uh, the first payload was bought by a guy by the name of Bill Moore, who worked as an executive for Morton Thiokol at the time, a company that uh, provides the uh, solid rocket boosters for the shuttle. And Gil wanted to see a lot of student involvement in the program, so he bought the first one out of his own funds, which at that time was $10,000, and donated it to the university. And then uh, an ex-professor of Utah University, and, uh, who has since retired, Professor Rex McGill, set up a program, an aerospace engineering program at the university, based on the Getaway Special Program. And they have flown about uh, five or six payloads now, and they're working on one that's going to fly later on this year. When the Getaway Special Program was first conceived, it was done so because major payloads in the shuttle were going to be manifested with a lot of extra room on the shuttle. They were trying to figure out how, how to optimize that room. So a lot of uh, hashing about was done at NASA headquarters and with industry and with the school systems across the country. And they decided to try and best take advantage of this by offering it as a small business research tool. Well, after feedback from the community, it was decided to just offer this to the general public and an in the international public on a first come, first serve, uh, queuing, uh, queued payload uh, basis. When they came to Goddard, where I work, at that time we were the uh, sounding rocket program and we were kind of a skunk works there at Goddard. We were the only people that really knew how to uh, design hardware for quick reaction type payloads, if you're familiar with uh, sounding rockets, you're aware of what that is. But uh, this is basically the type of hardware we came up to contain these payloads. And back in those days, it was recognized as a containerized system. That is, we, we pressure checked it to make sure that a small explosion wouldn't damage the shuttle. We did EMI tests on the thing to make sure that, uh, well, this is basically a 70 dB attenuator. And uh, we did, uh, 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 penetration analyses to make sure that small hardware couldn't get outside the canister. Well, prior to Challenger, that was a very bona fide uh, um, uh, reason, or that, that provided a bona fide container that was very capable of providing uh, for any experiment that came along the pipe. Because we didn't know what kind of experiments we were going to get. We figured there'd be schools all the way up to uh, very sophisticated experiments, and that turned out to be very true. It's, uh, but at any rate, this is the basic container that we used. It's uh, an aluminum cylinder that will uh, contain about 125 PSI burst pressure, and we also build pressure relief valves into the thing so that uh, in case somebody does blow something up, it won't all come out at one time. Once the program was up and operational, I mean, before the program was up and operational, uh, NASA went out and polled the community in general, the aerospace community, and, try, and they, with their feedback, we came up with this class of operation. We had three classes set up. One, of course, was uh, U.S. government. The U.S. government should have its own class because they're the ones that are putting up the money to fly the shuttle. Uh, class one is an educational experiment. Uh, the educational class, which is basically for any school that can come in and fly an educational payload. There it does say that you must, must establish uh, a bona fide uh, educational experiment. That is, uh, students actually have to have hands-on to the experiment. You can't say it's a student experiment and then have uh, some large corporation build it for them. The students really have to have hands-on. We got into that a few years ago. The Japanese went out and pulled, uh, had a big contest for experiments. And uh, two students suggested uh, crystal, basic crystal growth, which was a snowmaking experiment. And, uh, but uh, NEC Corporation built the payload. The students had no hands-on at all. 
So they just used the students as a, uh, and this was a, a newspaper in Tokyo that uh, generated this, so it was more for press than it was for students. Uh, class two is any foreign and commercial. Uh, that is, anybody that comes through the front door, if they're foreign or commercial, they go into this class, unless they're in edu a bona fide education, then you can stay in the class one category. And I'll get into a reason later why that is a, a, a nice area to be in. These are the prices that were established. Uh, the ones on the left were established back in the 70s. But uh, a couple of years ago, they were inflation indexed to bring them up to standard. And there was a lot of uh, consternation over this because it obviously still doesn't pay to fly an experiment on a shuttle. Uh, the smallest, of course, is uh, the $3,000, uh, two and a half cubic 50 pounds, which is uh, an educational experiment, the cheapest you can get on. That means the $3,000, we supply the canister, we supply you with the uh, the uh, safety uh, assessments at Johnson Space Center, and we supply you with the integration of your hardware in our flight canister at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the, the prices have been grandfathered to the educational community. In other words, if you are a bona fide experiment, uh, educational experiment, you can still maintain the old, old prices. I'll speak on these sizes a little later. I did mention the first uh, gas payload. The, the guy with the patch on his eyes, Gil Moore, who was the guy from Morton Thiokol that bought uh, the first experiment, and the uh, guy with the beard and the tan jacket is uh, Dr. Rex McGill, who was a professor at Utah State at the time. And these are the students that built the first experiments that flew in the getaway special. participation in the gas program. Here are uh, just three of the uh, foreign payloads. That's the People's Republic of China up there on the left. And of course the Germans. And the biogas, uh, I think, was the Swedish payload. I don't remember now. Here are some more of the foreign, uh, foreign experiments. You can see a, uh, an example of a payload there ready to fly on the top. Uh, generally, these payloads are suspended from the top plate, and I'll get into that later. And then they're cantilevered from the top plate, and then they have uh, side bumpers to keep, keep them from uh, ratcheting. NASA has the bottom section of the canister for uh, their own hardware. Uh, the one on the top right is the, that one on the top is an Australian payload that flew a couple of years ago, and it's going to fly again this fall, or sometime this winter. Uh, and the European Space Agency and uh, Remember. There's so many logos, it's hard to remember all of them. But that's uh, just trying to show you some of the uh, foreign participation we've had. And of course, uh, I did mention that we've had a lot of uh, a lot of participation with Canada, uh, Canada over the years, and uh, the arm being, of course, the most uh, widely known throughout the. This is a typical representation of some of the gas canisters in the payload bay. Uh, the one with the pack on it is a motorized door assembly. The door will open up. That's an extra cost option. I'll get into that later. And there's two and a half cubic foot of those half size cans there. Some of the Canadian involvement we've had are, uh, as you can see, are the NRC, the CSA, Telesat, Spar Aerospace, Crystal Aerospace in the Canada Center for Space Science. Uh, SPAR Aerospace flew an experiment. I don't know whether you've, uh, any of you heard of the bread baking experiment or not, that SPAR Aerospace flew. This is their, uh, their oven here. 
That's the oven they, they made the rest of its apparatus to support the experimental electronics. But they uh, did make a small loaf of bread. Uh, we never did uh, get the results of how the bread turned out, so I don't know exactly how it tasted. We had a... Uh, we had a... Uh, an Italian payload uh, at one time, at about the same time, the Italians were planning on flying some wine, some red wine. We thought maybe How long ago did this occur? Uh, the Spar Aerospace Experiment flew uh, right about three or four years ago. In fact, I'm hoping to take the Spar Aerospace tour one the morning. But uh, I was starting to say the Italians were getting ready to fly some wine about the same time this was coming down the pipe, but we never did material. I thought maybe we had some sort of a the, uh, last supper, international last supper going up for a while. Another, uh, some other involvement we have, it's an ongoing uh, payload offer of materials processing with the uh, uh, Bristol Aerospace and Canadian Space Agency is the Quest, so Queen's University experiment on the shuttle the space transportation system. And uh, we've been very impressed with the uh, people from Bristol Aerospace and the, uh, uh, the team out there. They've, been, uh, they've worked very well with our people down at Kennedy Space Center. We're looking forward to working with them again here shortly. They're going to fly later on this year. Uh, here's the uh, Quest payload on what we call our bridge, bridge experiment. There's uh, next to a spar experiment, which is, uh, there's the quest right there. And this was a spar, which, uh, as I recall, was a Canadian experiment also. This is the, what we call our bridge structure. I'm going to get into that here a little bit later. But uh, back prior to the Challenger accident, most of the gas payloads flew mounted on the side of the cargo bay. And they were off-the-shelf, quick reaction type payloads. But since Challenger, they've folded, they've made us fold our experiments into the mission flow timeline earlier. And they've also, they're also asking us to uh, provide uh, weight and CG balance to most of the larger payloads. So we're flying this thing uh, in the <coughs> cargo bay with up to 12 experiments on it at one time. Well, payload canisters, I should say. This is the uh, Quest 2 payload, and I just got permission from uh, Glenn Campbell of the Canadian Space Agency to use that here because it's not, uh, it has not been uh, published yet. But uh, they were very kind, uh, they and the uh, Idea Marketing Group in Winnipeg were very kind to provide this for this conference. And I think it's one of the most beautiful logos I've ever seen. By the way, you're, as you noticed from the canisters that flew before, uh, you're allowed to place this logo on the side of your canister in the cargo. And a lot of times you will actually see this on the uh, evening video. So sometimes that builds a little impetus to uh, try to get some uh, uh, corporate su support to build an experiment if you're with the school because they can put their, their, own, uh, their own logo on it. Some of the commercial participant, participation we have had, there's been a lot of foreign commercial organizations also, but this is some of the uh, experiments that have flown over the years. Of course, RCA is now Martin Marietta. The Coors Brewery in El Paso donated three of these to the, uh, the school system. El Paso used to lead the school system down there in uh, Texas, and they flown one thing on the uh, Park Seed Company, of course, flew uh, that large amount of seeds on the, uh, uh, the uh, LDEP, right, long duration exposure facility that was up for so long. And then they sent those out to a lot of the schools for uh, experiment, the, the planting experiments. Speaking earlier on the uh, canister sizes, uh, these are the basic sizes of uh, that is open to your experiment. The, as you can see, the top one is the five cubic foot and is exactly uh, twice the size of the center or bottom. The only other difference between the bottom two, weight cl uh, two classes is the weight factor. And these are three, five, and ten thousand dollars in the uh, educational class.
thought I'd throw a little graphic up of the canister here. This is exactly how, pretty much how it uh, looks from a schematic standpoint. You can, uh, this is really a schematic diagram that I had done, but you get this whole diameter for five cubic foot and just half of it for the uh, uh, two and a half cubic foot. The bottom three inches is a uh, reserve for our hardware that uh, turns the payload on and off. The only thing you get with this uh, experiment is three on-off switching functions. You must, everything must be self-contained. You have to have your own battery, your own power system, which generally is batteries. Uh, in fact, it has to always be batteries, but uh, uh, we've had a lot of success with the, uh, most of the payloads have had a lot of success with the Gates type lead acid gel cells, which is a sealed uh, type cell with very much like a flashlight cell in various sizes. But it's the same chemistry that's in an automobile battery. It's just a gel cell. And they are rechargeable. They have a long shelf life. So a lot of these experiments uh, are uh, flying this type of cell. We use these ourselves because they have turned out to be a very reliable cell. Uh, anything that you do on orbit, of course, you have to provide your own uh, your own uh, recording system if it's something you've got to record a lot. Your camera, for instance, if you're uh, if you're uh, provide, you need some sort of recording of seed growth or something like this. Uh, I don't guess there's much sense. You can see here where the uh, this is the insulated end cap, which is an optional uh, device that you can get to go on top of your canister. If you're not dissipating much heat in these canisters. You apply, it, you apply the insulated end cap. If you're dissipating a lot of heat, then you wouldn't want the end cap because that's the only chance you have of radiating any heat out of this experiment is to the space environment. I mentioned the uh, motorized door assembly earlier. Uh, this is uh, a device that uh, if for some reason you need to access the outer space, mostly, generally, you don't need uh, the vacuum of space because you can perform that on the ground. A lot of people do want to look at uh, stellar targets or for some reason they want to look at the ground. Or, uh, we had a group of students that uh, were working with the uh, National Geographic Society and they actually uh, flew cameras and took pictures of the ground. Uh, so the shuttle generally flies the camera way down. Uh, during most of the mission, because that's the most benign as far as temperatures are concerned. But uh, for anybody that wants a motorized door assembly, that's an extra cost option of about 8,000 US. Now you can actually get this uh, motorized door assembly with an optical window, which relaxes somewhat your uh, materials outgassing requirements, which are very strict on the shuttle. And the main reason for that is we don't know which payloads you may be flying next to. Someone may have optics right next to you, and they don't want your outgassing and coating their optics. But that is an available uh, option. You can put a window. That's what that is right in there. It's a little uh, window that covers up that 15-inch aperture. This is the uh, STS-64 mission that's uh, supposed to fly in September. Uh, we have a couple before that, but uh, the primary experiment here is the light, which is a LIDAR experiment. Uh, there's the uh, Canadian RMS over there. This is a uh, Spartan 201, which is one that our division does, but it's not in the project down there. It's a larger uh, autonomous carrier that's placed overboard, kind of like the German SPAS experiment. There's the gas bridge assembly sitting in the back because you've got so much weight up here. This is a little hitchhiker experiment here. And uh, I'll go into the hitchhiker a little bit later. That's a robot, robotic experiment that uh, has many material samples. And they have a robot that goes down and brings them up, sticks them in the oven. And it's mainly to prove the robotics more than anything else. And that's uh, built by our division.
this is uh, once we, if you're flying on a gas bridge, you usually have more turn, a longer turnover time to uh, us down at Kennedy Space Center. You have to prep your payload and have it installed in the can. It takes about three weeks to prep this with 12 payloads. We allow about one each for uh, one week each for four experiments, so it takes us three weeks to get all 12 of them going. Everybody wants to get them on last because of battery power. But uh, we've had very few problems with that. Our lead time is about L minus 90 days. We have to have your payload ready to turn over the shuttle about 90 days before the experiment, before the shuttle lifts off. So that means that it's sitting out there waiting. You, you don't have much time for, uh, you don't have much, you have no access once you turn it over to us. We have no access to our hardware either. But uh, that makes it, that severely limits what you can put into your experiment and expect it to survive if it's uh, biological or something like that. But this is uh, the gas bridge that had, uh, there were three motorized door assemblies on this one. Now this was uh, back prior to Challenger. In fact, this one was recovered two weeks before the Challenger right? It was the first gas bridge that we flew. We call that the bridge, uh, most of the payloads in the uh, in the cargo bay are, uh, I mean, most of the cross base structures are called impasse for multiple purpose experiments for uh, support structures, and we call ours the gas bridge just to keep differentiating. In uh, March of this year, uh, we celebrated the 100th gas experiment. <coughs> we started in '82, and we were down for almost four years when Challenger uh, was down. So. That's really six years to take us to fly 100 canisters. And this year, it looks like we're going to fly probably uh, at least 20% of that. Uh, we're, we're gaining more and more access to the shuttle because of this wait and see thing. So we're, we're flying more, more payloads than we actually have uh, payloads ready to fly. So we're flying a lot of ballast. These are the people at uh, NASA headquarters that run the program. If you should decide that you want to access the gas program, you can do it. You can make a reservation just by sending a $500 check down to this code here and a letter to this code requesting that you want to fly an experiment. All you need is a short paragraph, and they get you a, a reservation in the queuing system, a G four digit number that uh, says that that payload is locked into the queue at that spot. Right now, that doesn't mean anything, but back prior to Challenger, when we were flying so many of these experiments, it really did. Right now, we've got so many slots to fly payloads that uh, that really doesn't gain you anything except the fact that we can start working with Getaway Special program is run by the Shuttle Small Payloads Project, and we have some other carriers in the system. The Hitchhiker Junior is the one I was mentioning earlier that basically flies in gas hardware, but you have uh, some shuttle power and sh some shuttle telemetry available to you. Uh, it's limited, but the price range for this is uh, starts out at about a million dollars. If you want to fly a proof of concept experiment as a getaway special, uh, and a lot of people do, a lot of uh, companies are flying a proof of concept. Uh, that uh, Australian experiment is really a uh, telescope that they want a space flight approved before they actually put it on the satellite. <coughs> so they fly it in the getaway special and open the lid, make sure that it does everything in space like it would uh, on the uh, satellite and then they go on up into a larger program, and they can actually go on up into the Hitchhiker Junior. Now you do have uh, some, as I said, some limited uh, telemetry functions here. If you provide the, uh, the circuitry to the, uh, our, our group that manages the, the uh, electronics or the telemetry system, they can actually read out temperatures or whatever you have on your experiment in case you, want, uh, in case you need them later. These are, uh, this is a typical Hitchhiker Junior type experiment. As you can see, it looks very much like a getaway special. But it's got uh, 
it has these uh, functions that I was talking to you about earlier. This payload is mounted right down here. These others were other types of experiments. So I, I'm not sure exactly what they were, but they flew recently on the shuttle. And this is looking down into the shuttle cargo bay from up, up above. There's uh, one of the larger, the Eureka sitting up there, which is one of the larger experiments that flying on that same mission. Then we get to the uh, hitchhiker, which is uh, a much more broad, uh, broad range of hardware that's available. You can fly experiments on the hitchhiker that, from side-mounted hitchhikers, which is a, uh, uh, a hitchhiker G, or was originally managed by Goddard, and then they had the hitchhiker M, which took up the whole cargo bay. I mean, uh, across the cargo bay, that was. Uh, Managed by Marshall. Now Goddard does them all. We're getting ready to change those designations to side mounted and cross bay, so it's easier to remember what they are. But in the hitchhiker, we actually have a ground station at Goddard where you can actually control your payload from the ground and take data from it. And of course, uh, like I say, you're, you're, you've got to pay for what you get, so it costs a lot more than the getaway special. I am here mainly to talk about the getaway special because uh, that kind of fits the flavor of the conference here for the uh, educational experiments and low-cost access to space. But uh, some people would like to know something about the rest of the project. Pardon? Okay. This is the uh, Hitchhiker side mounted or Hitchhiker G right now, which shows uh, one of the payloads that we flew last year, the ASP, or Attitude Sensor Package, which was one of those payloads that was flying for proof of concept before they actually put it on the larger payload. And this is an example of the Hitchhiker Rim, which is the Hitchhiker C, cross bay. This whole thing was a Hitchhiker and that happened to be on an Air Force mission called uh, STP-1 uh, about three years ago. They also ejected some, these are put by getaway special canisters, and the, uh, the Air Force used these to eject some small satellites. If you would like more information on the getaway special project, I did bring some uh, brochures which are in the back of the room showing the general capabilities where you can get in touch with my office. I do have my email address I got just before this graphic was made, so I do have, even though it's pretty long, it's, uh, uh, I have some handouts that would have the email address on them if you want. I also have some cards that anybody needs. But we are really looking for getaway special payload. We have, a, we're flying a lot more ballast than we need to fly. There's ample opportunity to fly getaway specials if you went through with your reservation system right now. You probably could be flying them in 12 to 18 months. And we have more than enough room on the shuttle to fly. We, uh, we have flown ballast over the past year. A lot of these canisters we fly with nothing but dead weight in them because we don't have the payloads ready to fly. But it's available if you want to use it. And uh, we're open to anyone that wants to fly a payload on them. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Is this the payload project? Is it is it done because of NASA cost cutting budget? Is it what? Is it is it done because of the NASA cost cutting budget, or is it just uh, something that NASA came up with to allow the general public access to the shuttle? You mean the, uh, the getaway special yeah. program or result? Yeah, uh, no, no, the getaway part. special program uh, was conceived back in the seventies. And we've been flying payloads actively since 1982. It has nothing to do with that. It, it's right. just to provide, we're trying to fill the shuttle up is what we're doing, and uh, provide that at low cost to the public in general. And that, the original intention was to provide a quick, re, quick reaction on the shuttle payload. Now we can't do that quite as quickly because we need to fold you into the shuttle timeline uh, earlier than we used to. They need to know what's going to be flying on that mission. And, what uh, requirement the mission? Yes, sir. Um, how is the potential of decreasing shuttle missions in the future going to affect your payloads? Oh, that's a 
that's a that's a very difficult question uh, to answer right now. Even even with six uh, shuttle payloads a year, if we could fly the bridge on every mission to balance it out, you're still talking about 72 canisters. And when they get get into the space station, there, there's discussion now about uh, evolving these payloads around to where you can fly them longer on the space station. Uh, that's not defined yet. Also, uh, NASA is uh, looking into right now providing educational initiatives to the Getaway Special Program. And two of the ideas they're looking at and will probably be announced next year are very small, uh, three square, four square inches, maybe flying 100 of them in canisters, and they'd have to be very simple experiments, but mainly to trigger the interest at a very young level of education. It looked to me like this, this conference is, is really trying to do that, and that would be one way of doing that. And probably uh, it would be very, very low cost. Another one it, along the same lines is maybe to fly 10 of those with one cubic foot experiments or a little more advanced things to do. I'm sorry, I came in late, but how much do you say they get away special containers containers uh, one? Well, they, uh, if you're a bona fide educational, you can fly, let me see if I can find that graphic here, $3,000 is the cheaper, cheapest you can fly. That's 60 pounds, two and a half cubic feet. The uh, largest is 10,000 pounds, I mean 10, $10,000 at uh, uh, five feet. And that's, uh, I'm trying to find out what you got to have with this. But uh, if it's a bona fide educational experiment, those prices went from three, five, and ten thousand dollars up to nine, fourteen, and twenty-seven thousand dollars about two years ago. If you are one kind of education, then you'll be grandfathered at the old price. I mean, they have a time over at NASA headquarters that looks at it and makes sure students are getting hands-on with an experiment. Somebody can't come through the door and say, well, we're going to apply a student experiment and then not have students learning something from the program. Any other questions? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have another question. Is it is possible to Eject a projectile from one of these fish hydrogen that you have. If you, if you have the cargo, cargo bay on the shuttle is open, and can you can you eject a small projectile from one of these? Yeah, she could do that from the Hitchhiker Jr. Uh, yeah. Earlier, you probably weren't here. I talked about the two that we ejected from the Getaway Special Program back prior to Challenger. And since Challenger, they're saying that that's too uh, too highly a visible program, and we don't have enough redundancy or safety built into the, the gas system to do that. So there's some of the Hitchhiker Jr. system, which is more expensive, but yes, you can do that. Uh, the general capability right now is about 150 pounds, three and a half cubic feet. And there are a number of those that have been done since then. Brem Bremsap was just uh, that recently. Yes, sir. Do those prices apply to uh, completely private ventures? Uh, no. Uh, well, they, there is a commercial commercial category, but generally the prices are nine, fourteen, and twenty-seven thousand dollars. They have to be bona fide uh, uh, research and development experiments. Does that answer your question? Well, I was thinking strictly purely commercial. commercial. If, uh, if you want to do it, and you say uh, it's not particularly for research. Uh, well, you, you, you can't, for instance, buy something that you're going to sell at outright like uh, 100 coins or something like that. It's got to be something that uh, you know, NASA has to kind of make sure that you're you're not utilizing a you launch a microset from smart satellite. Or you yeah. launch it like a microset. Sure. From a gas Yes. We yes. have done it in our building. This is 100. Did you say 100 pounds? Well, if you get into the if you get into satellites now, you're actually uh, looking for something that would cost you a little more because there's an extra. Uh, an additional optional cost for those services. This yeah. is the ejection service. Yeah. But you can eject a satellite uh, probably for, I think the uh, Bremsat ran about $1.3 million altogether. Now that was for, for everything, except well, for their hardware. Right, you, you, you just took a big jump from, uh, from 10,000 to 1.3 uh, million. Uh, 
If you're at uh, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, uh, we can do that as hobbyists. Uh, we can't do 1.3 million as a hobbyist. Well, I, I did say that uh, they're no longer allowed in the getaway special program. The prices I was quoting were the getaway specials. Okay. The, the prices uh, for the satellite, yeah. not, satellites are no longer allowed in getaway specials. They're only allowed in hitchhikers, or hitchhiker juniors, or above. Is there a danger of something like a satellite so getaway special containers? Well, after Challenger, they decided that the uh, they decided that the, the reliability that was built into the gas container for self-contained payloads was not good enough for the safety aspects that, that are now required for any payload to fly. So they decided if you want to fly a satellite now, you've got to go up into a higher program and that and fly as a secondary class travel experiment. So it's you start the satellite, out. The satellite itself is a dangerous uh, Well, it, it's something that's no longer contained on the shuttle. We've got to pay for the safety reviews, and we've also got to pay for the shuttle recontact analysis on the succeeding orbit. And all of that's very expensive, and you can't do that on a low cost program like a building. Well, that's one of the major things yeah. that drove, drove it out of the gas program. Because the first two were done, part one was a DARPA satellite, and the other one was a Utah University proof of concept. So the government went along and asked to help them pave the way for that. So they didn't have to pay for a lot of that. Thanks very much.